Science, I especially believe, is very important. I've gotten a lot of calls, emails, telegrams, and sympathetic glances the past couple of weeks from people who are wondering if Carlos the Scientist has returned from the other world desert he is trapped in. And here I remind you that he became trapped there while saving our city from treacherous, dark forces. I remind you, he is a hero. I remind you that my boyfriend is a hero. Sadly, Carlos is still in the desert. The same desert our new mayor was once trapped in. Fortunately, as Dana discovered, cell phone batteries last forever there. And there's pretty good Wi-Fi, despite there being just vast amounts of sand and, apparently, a mountain. But if our mayor can make it out fine, I think a scientist can too. Scientists are always fine. It's almost impossible to get a reservation there. I tried to get a table for... for just one, of course. Oh, listeners, guess who we've got on the phone line now? I'll give you a hint. He saved Night Vale a few weeks ago by shutting out a great terror trying to invade us from another world. It wasn't just me. Also, he's my boyfriend. And a scientist. And I miss him. I miss you too. That's right. My boyfriend is a hero. Please welcome to our show, Carlos the Scientist. (laughs) You're too much. Listeners, Carlos had to stay behind in whatever strange desert otherworld which was very brave of him, even though he's now very far away from people that love him. Any luck getting back through to Night Vale? Not yet. Oh, but I've been exploring this strange rumbling noise here. It's the same rumbling noise we heard when that terrible light was coming into Night Vale. Are you safe? Is everything okay? Actually, there it is again. When we shut the doors, the rumbling and the unbearably bright light went away. This empty desert with the mountain and the lighthouse and the large wandering army all seemed so normal, you know? But last night, the rumbling returned. There it is again. I need to grab my instruments. I... I can't hear it. I'll call you back. No, no, Carlos, I... (sighs) Every time, I never know when you'll call back. Oh, my phone's buzzing. Carlos? Hello? Carlos, are you back on the line? Yes. So, there is a lighthouse here in the desert. It's on top of a tall mountain. And there's a blinking red light on the top of this lighthouse. And this blinking red light always blinks, okay? That's what it does. But now that the rumbling has returned... Can can you hear the rumbling from your end, Cecil? No. It's very loud. But when the rumbling happens, the blinking red light stops blinking. It just stays on. What do you think that means? I don't know. I've talked with some of the army of men and women and others who roam about this desert, and they look frightened. They have never seen the blinking light stop blinking. It is what a blinking light is supposed to do. And fear is what happens when a thing that has always behaved one way does not behave that way at all. They run and hide now when they hear the rumbling and see the static red light up on the mountain. I too am starting to feel scared. Carlos, remember how you got into that desert in the first place? You went through a door in a house that did not seem to exist. Have you found any of those doors yet? Not yet, no. Carlos... Look for those doors. There must be at least one left somewhere. I'll start looking very soon, okay? But listen, Cecil, I'd really like to figure out this rumbling slash red light thing. I'm a scientist. I need to discover slash understand things. It's what I do. But couldn't you look for the door while you figure it out? I'll look for the door some tomorrow. For sure I will. Well, that's not what I was The rumbling's to... gone. Did you hear that? I've got to run. I need to find Doug. Who's Doug? Wait, Carlos, who's Doug? Carlos? Okay. 
Well, I guess let's just have a look at today's horoscopes. Aquarius. Your boyfriend is trapped in an alternate desert dimension. It is difficult to say when he will return. Perhaps take up drinking while crying in a quiet room. Wow, that's a very specific and painful horoscope. Thanks for nothing, stars. Taurus. Someone misses you a lot, Taurus. And even though you have nothing but endless time, trapped out in a nightmarish desert hellscape, you have a hard time making a phone call longer than 10 minutes. Maybe call a bit more than you do, Taurus. Yep, that's just some astrological advice from the stars. Ah, he's calling in again. Carlos? Cecil, the rumbling has started again. The mountain is moving up and down like breathing. There are creaks and groans in the earth in the stones that together sound like a growl, an undulating snarl of something much bigger than anything that should ever be able to snarl. Cecil, this is a strange place, and considering where I've lived for the past couple years, that says a lot. I know Dana used to be trapped here, and she has told you about it. I mean, I used to wonder how she could call and text you from this place for an entire year with no cell towers or power outlets. But I've been here for weeks, and I have three bars, only 4G, but still, and 97% battery, which was the charge I had when I came through the door in the house that doesn't exist. In a temporary peace between the rumblings, I walked with some of the desert army toward a small patch of discolored sand. We found a swath of damp dirt, just a handful of red mud, and in that mud were several tiny white bones. It looked like long legs and short wings of a creature I can't even imagine. I look forward to figuring out exactly what this is. I'll be able to imagine it then. Carlos, I don't think it's safe there. Listen, I want you to find a way to- Cecil, nothing and nowhere is safe. But there are things greater than us. Greater than all of this? So you can't see it, but I just made a big sweeping hand gesture to indicate everything in the universe. And there are people who must learn about it all. How it all works and why. This is what we call science. Yes, I know what science is. And I am a scientist. Okay, I understand. It's just... It's just that I miss you. And... Oh. Oh my. The building is shaking. You can feel it? You can feel the rumbling? Oh, this is exciting. Wait, this is new. The ground is moving very quickly. There is a large lump churning the sand up and down. I'm leaning out over this ledge to get a better view of this fantastic event and... Ow! Carlos, what happened? I got hit. What is that? Is that a rock? Ow! Carlos! Cecil, the rocks are coming down. They're coming down the side of this hill. I need to take cover. I need to find a... Carlos. Carlos? Listeners, while the earth still shakes, take shelter. This does not feel like one of our government scheduled earthquakes, but if I were you, I would still do as the earthquake safety mascot, Duncan the Brown Recluse Spider, always says. I'm small, and I hide a lot so it's easy to be safe. And with that, I take you now to the weather. Carlos, are you there? Carlos? I'm here. Are you okay? I'm fine. A scientist is always fine. Doug was really helpful. Who is Doug? He's one of the members of this great masked army. He must be a captain of some sort, given his size and the respect he appears to garner. As the rocks and boulders came down, Doug picked up a large, flat stone and held it above us. The rocks bounced off his makeshift shield. Unfortunately, I dropped my phone. I smashed the phone something good. I thought I lost you for a while there, Cecil. 
I was despairing that my one way to reach you would be lost for who knows how long. But then, you know what? Something really amazing happened. Something tremendous. The phone healed itself. Oh, that's... that's great. It is great, but phones don't just heal themselves. This is another scientific mystery I can't wait to get to the bottom of. Where is Doug now? Oh, I don't know. He's probably back at the encampment. They're a nomadic army. Sometimes they are here, sometimes not. I don't really have time to make new friends. They're nice people, but there is a lot of work for me to do here. And the only person I truly care about isn't in this desert anyway. I do not know what the rumbling is. I do not know why some doors work and others do not. I do not know why my phone never loses battery power and can heal itself. I do not know how long it will take me to pursue this knowledge. But I do know two things. What is that? I love you. I love you too. What's the other thing? You just said it. Cecil, I have to go. Be patient with me. We have our phones, we have our voices, and you have the best voice of them all. Thanks for being on the air with me. We did almost the entire show together. We can still do things together, even in absence. I'll be back again soon. Find that door, Carlos. I will, but first I need to see if the red light is blinking again or not. Okay. Bye, Carlos. Meanwhile, I've been getting regular calls and Snapchats from Carlos. You know, my hero scientist boyfriend. From the desert otherworld he is very temporarily trapped in. He'll be back super soon. He says that he found a cactus. Only it's not a cactus. Only it is. He says it's difficult to explain and that he really wants to explain it. That is what he is for, he said. To explain a world that defies explanation. He sent me a photo of the cactus, but it only appeared on my phone as an error box that said, Even if you could you would wish you hadn't. Well, it sounds like he's having fun out there. That's... that's good. I first met him at the wedding. He's busy, or he says he is. He does always seem to be at the station. Or at least he used to be. This last year's been good for him, I think. It has softened him a little, in the right places. Although not at all toward me. (laughs) 